Right, this is gonna be a talking video and I wanted to talk about where the 2023 Boulder World Cup season stands in terms of athletes and placements and what I think is gonna happen for the rest of the season. We've had three events, we've got three more to go and then that will be the end of the 2023 season and we'll know who the Boulder World Cup champion is for this year. The World Championship comes later, Olympics comes next year, but there is this prize that we've always had, which is winning the World Cup for the entire year. And it's been one of the hardest awards to win. It's not random. It's not down to scarcity like the World Championships or like the Olympics. It's you've got to show up and you have to perform consistently to be a World Cup champion by showing up through the season and getting those results kind of an award that gets written off when was the last time you even watched the podium ceremony for one of these awards because they shoehorn it into the end of the very last comp and sometimes it's not even on the stream which is ridiculous because it is probably my favorite award when trying to judge people historically but that's how it is anyway I'm already rambling let's get right into this I want to talk first of all about the men and see where we're at now this is in order of the Boulder World Cup ranking um, I'm not going to include the points because this isn't a math video I'm not going to break down how many points everybody has and what the likelihood is of them earning enough points although in my head that's kind of approximately what I'm doing so this is their placings from Hachioji Seoul and Salt Lake and they are ordered from top to bottom uh, Tomo Narasaki is currently ranked first place and Yoshiyuki is currently ranked 10th, and I'm not gonna bother talking about anybody below that because it's not worth it in a what I hope is a short video. But I need to start with Mejdi Shalk because in my opinion, he is the strongest looking climber this season. He smoked the first two competitions. Um, starting off the season with two golds is, is pretty rare. Two golds in general on the men's side is extremely rare, and I'm kind of sad from just like a storytelling perspective that he didn't show up for Salt Lake where he could have made it a three-peat, which is exceedingly rare. And who knows if he could have gone beyond that, that would have been a sight to see. Um, and I mean, four male wins is probably even more impressive than six female wins, just based on that, on how, how rarely those streaks come together. Um, but he decides to bail on Salt Lake City. He is going to be in Prague, but he is not registered for Brixen or Innsbruck, which means he'll only be showing up at most to three events this entire season. I think he's the favorite to win Prague. So I think he's going to end this season with 3,000 points, 1,000 for each gold, if you if, if you weren't aware. I'll put a link in the description for how many points you get and where the rankings are at at the moment. I think he's the best climber on the circuit, but he's not showing up. I get it from an Olympic perspective. He's probably one of the favorites to qualify through the World Championships and maybe win the Olympics in general. But it's sad that he, in my opinion, is going to be fighting at most for silver for the World Cup this year maybe bronze and a chance that he doesn't get in the top three at all, which is a shame given his unreal form this year. But Tomoe Narasaki at the top at the moment with a 10-2-1. The Japanese like golden trio of male boulders hasn't looked great this season. Tomoe is frankly the most consistent with those results, actually not just of those three Japanese men, but of the entire bouldering field. Doesn't look as good as Mejdi, frankly, but he is registered for the upcoming three events. And with his three attendances already, that means he is my absolute favorite to win the 2023 Boulder World Cup, which is a huge deal for him. Uh, something I hope he should be proud of because he is kind of the prototypical boulderer of the last decade. Um, prototypical speed climber of the last decade, maybe. <laughs> that joke never gets old. Um, it's old already. Um, he is registered for the next three events. We are going to see him in Prague. I think there is a chance maybe he wins one more gold. Uh, I think he is going to probably be in finals in two of the next three World Cups, maybe three of the next three. So I think he's your 2023 Boulder World Cup champion if he keeps it up. Hannes Van, I'm not going to be able to go through all 10 of these guys if I want to do the women. Hannes Van Dyson, I think he's the breakout of the year for sure. Uh, where did this guy come from? Take a look at his rankings in the last couple of seasons. So look at his World Cup rank last year in 2022. Look at his European Cup rank the year before that. Look at his European Youth rank the year before that. Like this guy is not somebody you would have picked based on his last couple seasons to be someone who is earning silvers and, and getting tops in the finals of a World Cup and making multiple finals in one season. That blows me away. My problem is, in terms of his style, he looks inexperienced. 
although he is a brave climber and he is going for moves and, and sticking holds and grips that like look unlikely and some of the more uh, veteran climbers probably wouldn't bother with trying. So he's fun to watch, but he's not getting a lot of the tops that you need to get to be a consistent competitor at this level yet. So to me, I think he makes at most one more final this season. I don't think he gets any more medals. I think this is the best we're going to see of him for the rest of 2023. And I don't think he's going to be a top three climber for the season either. I think he's going to keep dropping down those ranks when more consistent athletes move up and when some other names probably show up in finals again. Zhang Wanchan, he's got a chance to finally uh, uh, maybe get that World Cup podium one more time. He's been extremely consistent for like the nine seasons he's been competing. I think he's only missed the top 10 of the Boulder World Cup ranking once, and that would have been the like devastating 2021 COVID year where I think he only attended a single Boulder World Cup. It was the Olympics. It was COVID. A lot of the uh, uh, Asian countries had a, a really hard time getting out to competitions. But every other year, he is a top 10 bouldering competitor consistently going back to like 2014. I think in the next couple comps, he's going to make more finals. I think he's going to earn more points. And I think between him and Mejdi falling down, doing doing fewer events, and possibly the next guy, I think that's your fight for silver, bronze, and fourth place is Jongwon, Mejdi, and the next name, Serato and Raku. This guy's the real deal. If you want to make a comparison to Hannes van Dyssen, this guy's actually getting the right tops. I think he's getting them more consistently, and he's topping the kind of boulders that the big, consistent, and historical names like Tomoa are topping. He's earning those as well. It's not just weird little one-off slab boulders with dynamic finishes. I, I don't want to pigeonhole Hannes, but like that's kind of where he's at at this moment. I think Mejdi is going to win Prague, this this event coming up, but I think Serato could win either Brixen or Innsbruck, and he's certainly in the running for both. Um, again, Jongwon's biggest threat to stay on the podium is this guy. Um, but interestingly, this will be, because this is basically Serato's like first legit year as a competitor, this next swing where Serato is uh, registered for Prague, Brixen, and Innsbruck, this is going to be his first big, long competitive trip away from home. He did the couple Asian World Cups, and then he did Salt Lake City, but this is many weeks in a row where he's going to be competing away from home. I'm kind of curious how he does. I'm not saying he's going to fall apart, but I think that's an interesting thing to watch for the young Serato and Raku. I'm not going through the rest of these names. Don't be mad at me for not talking about Toby Roberts and Paul Yentz bronze. Just wait to the end of the season and we'll find out if those were consistent or not. A couple names I do want to mention, though, is Yoshiki Ogata at the bottom. For somebody that's won the last two Boulder World Cup seasons, this is an awful start. I don't know where he's at. I think he's always in the running to make a finals. Um, I don't think he's going to be top three at the end of this year based on what we've seen so far. But I hope he has a chance to show some good form before we get to the World Championships because this guy, in my opinion, deserves to be one of the Olympians. And fighting for those two Japanese spots in the Olympics must be just so difficult to handle when you're competing against all these other people who you know are strong and you know them so well. I think he should be one of the favorites, and it's a terrible start to the season. Feel really bad for him. Kokoro Fuji is not even in the top 10, but that's mostly because he got injured in qualifiers of the second competition of the year. He finishes qualifiers in Seoul in third place. Third, that's three fingers. Third place. Bails on semifinals because of this injury that he sustained in qualifiers, and so he finishes the comp technically in 20th, but his performance looked way better than that. So he bombs out of Seoul because of the injury. He decides to skip Salt Lake City and those results of his fourth place in Hachiyoji, 20th in Seoul and no result in Salt Lake City because he didn't attend means he's not in the top 10. He could easily make a comeback. He could maybe get into a podium position at one of these World Cups. Don't think he's going to be in the top three for the season, but I imagine this guy could earn a medal or two still in the remaining events if he recovers from that injury quickly. Where are we at? Nine minutes? Okay, let's keep going. There's one more name we got to talk about for the guys. It's another missing name, and it is, of course, Adam Andra, who is finally going to show up again after we've missed him from competition since, since the Olympics. Yeah, since the Olympics. We haven't seen him in a Boulder World Cup since 2021. There's still a lid on this water bottle. So we haven't seen him in a couple of years. Not to say he's got ring rust because he's been outside climbing, 
the hardest shit in existence just outside, right? And I think we need to look back at his history as a competitor in bouldering and say over his entire career, he has missed the final like three or four times. It's an unbelievable record. And he was always the kind of climber that would take a year off, be outside, then do a year of competition, then take a year off and go outside and then do a year of competition. He's used to the back and forth. I think he's somebody that will make finals in the two events that he shows up to, which are supposed to be Prague and Brixen. Not sure if he's going to get a medal. Men's field is just kind of crazy like that, but he's certainly someone who could earn a medal. The one thing I'm watching, especially for Adam, is how he does in front of a home crowd. And so here's the little historical throwback. The last time a a, a World Cup, uh, it was an I, yeah, it was an IFSC World Cup in 2009 was in Brno which happens to be Adam Andra's hometown. It was in Adam Andra's hometown, and it was in 2009, which also happened to be Adam Andra's debut World Cup season. So, like, interesting little uh, uh, little linkage there. Well, how did he do? Well, for the entire season, he crushed it. He won the 2009 World Cup season, but his result in Brno was his worst result of the season. He came 11th place, which I mean is not that bad, but it was the worst result for him of the year, whereas he won four other gold medals that year. His hometown result was awful. And I think that's an interesting point when we talk about being a hometown favorite. It looks like in climbing, not just Adam, but maybe you look at the Austrians, maybe you look at the Japanese climbers, climbing in front of a home crowd is not an advantage most of the time. The big asterisk, of course, is American climbers. For some reason, they've just got some bonkers advantage when they're on that side of the Atlantic. So anyway, that's what I'm looking for, Adam. He's going to be in Prague. He's supposed to be in Brixen. He will not be in Innsbruck. So he is not, in my opinion, a contender for the 2023 Boulder World Cup podium, but I think he could walk away with a medal or two. Let's talk about the women. Now, this season didn't go the way we all expected. Of course, before the World Cups even began for 2003, 2023, pardon me. We all see that video of Yanya hobbling out of a clinic or a hospital with a boot and a crutch. And the entire season is thrown into disarray. Our favorite climber, and the favorite to win any event she shows up to is no longer going to be there for the foreseeable future. Well, that foreseeable future is over and Yanya is back. So let's talk about the last three competitions we saw from the women. Without Yanya, it was basically everybody else just is like everybody trying to like, you know, smash and grab from, you know, in the middle of a riot, just trying to take whatever they can before the cops show up. Right. Well, the cops are back. Yanya is here. The way I look at this is Yanya is a tier one competitor. In bouldering, Natalia is tier two. There is that much ground between the two of them. It's not 1A and 1B. It is tier one for Yanya, tier two for Natalia. And then Brooke and Miho and Orianne and maybe Hannah are like tier three, like 3A and 3B. So with Yanya gone, it was supposed to be the Natalia show. And of course, Natalia has some health issues that we now know caused her to absolutely lose it in the first World Cups of the season. And it looked like she may be gone as well, completely, possibly for the whole year based on those first couple results. Fortunately, she comes back. She does well in Salt Lake City and wins the thing like we would expect in a competition without Yanya. But the party's over and Yanya is back. So let's talk about what we saw. Brooke Rabatou wins her first World Cup in Hachioji and then consistent bronzes for the rest of the season so far. Just because of the consistency, Brooke Rabatou is my favorite to win the 2023 Boulder World Cup season, uh, which I think historically is really fascinating. And there will be endless comparisons to her mother, of course, who dominated the mid 90s as a lead climber, um, kind of the preeminent name in American competition climbing until Natalia Grossman, frankly, if we want to talk about longevity and consistent winning and not just like little peaks here and there, like an Alex Puccio or uh, or like a Chris Sharma when he was briefly around. Right. Talking about like career career climbers. The problem for Brooke, just like the rest of them, is how is attendance going to mess you up? Brooke is not going to be in Prague this weekend, so she's skipping out on some points there. But I think it is still hers, and it's going to come down to attendance. When she does show up, she is consistent. So I believe she is going to win the 2023 season, even with Yanya back, even with Natalia in good form. I think it is hers to lose. So, so long as she is making finals, like she always does, in Brixen and Innsbruck, which she is registered for, I think this is her year completely. 
Natalia Grossman, we already talked about the bad start, but comes back to show that she is super powerful. But let's just look at her past couple years, right? She missed not just the podium in the first two events, she missed finals in those first two events, although finals in Seoul, like not, she, you know, she, sorry, I shouldn't say she missed finals in Seoul. She missed the top 10 in Seoul. There was no finals. So she was halfway in semifinals. But this is the first time that she was missing finals since COVID started or like since COVID ended and the beginning of her remarkable run in 2021, right? She's been very consistent since then. She is at a points deficit though. And I'm worried because she has, as we've now seen today, she has bailed on Prague. She's not going to be there. And that means going into the end of the year, she's got one great result, two not so good results. And then she might show up to Brixen. She might show up to Innsbruck. I think Natalia has a very good chance of being the silver medalist or bronze medalist for this season. But it is, again, going to come down to attendance and how she climbs. Is that illness, is that condition that stops her from competing at her best uh, going to hold her back again? Or is she going to be able to conquer that or avoid it when she's um, away from home and in Europe for an extended period of time? She will not be in Prague. Miho Nanaka, just like Natalia, single win and two disappointing semifinals finishes but that's enough to keep third place in the field for right now unlike natalia this is a lot closer to miho's recent form over the last couple years so this isn't actually that surprising this is kind of about where miho should be 11th is maybe a little lower than average but first over the last couple like last four-ish five-ish years is higher than miho has been typically she's not somebody that's earned a gold medal since 2018 as we all remember we talked about uh when she finally broke uh, broke that um, curse uh, in Seoul and got that gold medal uh, for the first time in a long time. I think she's likely going to miss the season podium behind Brooke and Natalia and Oriane coming up next. <clears throat> Unless she gets some more big podiums at these World Cups, which is possible because as we're going to see later on, there are a ton of people skipping out on Prague, but Miho will be there. So I think there is a better than normal chance that she might win a bronze or possibly on a very good day even a silver i don't know how many more women we're going to do orianne Barton. um aside from the bad start in hachioji this is classic orianne and the other classic aspect of orianne aside from finishing second and third is can you keep it up for the rest of the bouldering season and historically the answer has been no so is she going to fall off like crazy like she did in the last couple seasons or will this for the first time be a year where we see her looking consistently in form and in shape and not exhausted and actually get to the world championships looking like you're ready to compete for one of the biggest prizes in competitive climbing we didn't really see it coming the last couple of years maybe we should have but again i might fall for it again i think she is looking really good in her climbing and with an inconsistent field at each event I think there's a very good chance she wins two more silvers this year. I say two more, not three, because she is not registered for Innsbruck. So we should see her in Prague and we should see her in Brixen. I know I'm at Tsufuji. I very talented climber, but surrounded by heavyweights. Look at the four women that are ahead of her and then look at Hannah behind her. I would say Anand has no chance of making the podium this year just because, again, she is uh, she is boxed in on all sides by consistent climbers. Um, good results from Anand, but they are off the back of Yanya not being around and Natalia, uh, again, having terrible form. When those two are in, uh, are, are in the comp, Anand's going to have a much harder time of even just making finals. Hannah Moyle, I'm going to stop here. Hannah Moyle, some decent results, but she's given away free points by not showing up to Salt Lake City when Yanya is gone. Like that is a place where you could win another medal or you could at least make a high finals. And, and you know, on a crazy day, you could win, you know, a gold medal. We saw how close Hannah and Natalia were at the end of last season uh, towards the end of it. Not saying that's a consistent result, but you never know. She could have she could have taken the gold off of Natalia in Salt Lake City had things gone a certain way, but she didn't show up. And it looks like she has bailed on Prague, even though she was registered. She's not going to be there. So uh, Hannah Moyle, I think, is not somebody that is going to uh, get on the season podium. I think it is down to Brooke and then a fight between Natalia and Oriane. I'm going to skip the rest of these names. Don't be mad at me. But let's talk about uh, Yanya uh, one last time. People are questioning what Yanya is going to look like when we get into Prague and again she's registered for Prague she is confirmed for Prague I should say 
she's going to skip Brixen and Yanya is going to show up in Innsbruck. So we're only going to see Yanya at most twice in this Boulder World Cup season. And I think she's walking away from this season with two gold medals. I don't have any reason to believe that Yanya Garmbret is somehow worse than she was for the last couple of years. Her attendance has been inconsistent and awful. If you're a fan of Yanya, you want to see her at these Boulder World Cups. Uh, but in 2021, the Olympic year, we saw very little. In 2022, she, of course, bailed on the season after winning the very first event. Yeah, she was injured. It's a toe injury. It's not something that stopped her from training upper body, and she probably got to train pretty holistic movement pretty quickly into that recovery. We saw her look excellent at not just uh, not you know you don't have to go back to Myringen of last year to see her perform well in the Boulder World Cup because we saw her look excellent at the European Championships as well in the summer of 2022. So you're not really going that far back to see her performing at her best. And between the injury and people say like, oh hey. Climbers like Aimori are coming for her. I need to emphasize how last year, Yanya wasn't really beaten by Aimori. She was really just matched. And that was impressive by itself. And we made all that hullabaloo off of Yanya Garnbrett just being matched by somebody. Yanya is that incredible when, when somebody gets close to being on par. That's an extraordinary story. And we, we write it off as if Yanya has been defeated just because somebody managed to achieve approximately the same thing. Even though Aimori, of course, was a fresh, rested, young arm coming in at the very end of a season and managed to narrowly win those World Cups over someone like Yanya. So I don't take all those things and, and then think to myself, mm, you know, Yanya's falling off. I think Yanya is the absolute favorite to still win any World Cup that she shows up to. So for Yanya, that's two gold medals coming up for her. She is going to win Prague. Um, I think, yeah, I think Prague is going to be Yanya and Mejdi, gold medals for each of them. I feel extremely confident about those two results. But that's not going to be enough points to put her on the 2023 Boulder season podium. Which means that we haven't seen Yanya uh, be first place in the World Cup podium since 2019. All right. So Yanya hasn't won a Boulder World Cup season since 2019. That was the only one she's won. You can make it that way you will. But maybe you start to say like hmm, her record, her performance, her awards are starting to look a lot like the uh, uh, the career on paper that Sandrine Levey had back in the early and mid 2000s. Maybe something we'll revisit in the future based on how these next couple years go. But if somebody talks to you about Yanya Garnbrett being the greatest boulder of all time, maybe an interesting talking point is looking at her World Cup career and uh, seeing how quiet it actually is apart from that incredible 2019 season and a couple of the events uh, bookending it before and after the Olympics. So that's all I really have to say. I think those are your winners for Prague is Mejdi and uh, Yanya for the 2023 World Cup season. I think on the men's side, it's going to be Tomoe Narasaki and then a fight between Mejdi, Jongwon, and Serato and Raku for second, third, and fourth. And for the women's side, I'm pretty sure Brooke Rabatou is going to win this, although there's a chance she gets sniped by Natalia or Ori Ann. But I think that is going to be the three for the 2023 World Cup is Natalia, Brooke, and Orianne again. I hope you made it through this talkie video. Prague starts in like 10 hours or something from when I record this. I hope you enjoy it. If you like this kind of stuff, hop in the Plastic Weekly Discord. We can talk more about it. Maybe I'll do another one of these, hopefully shorter than this. Maybe I can do one after, uh, after the speed season wraps up or maybe after the lead season uh, gets halfway uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to this if you like garbage about rock climbing. Anyway, see you guys in the next one.